We start with the basic uh, ruling. Eh? The basic principle in Islam, in Fiqh, is that everything is actually halal unless otherwise specified as haram. Uh-huh. So, as far as other says you can say, the Prophet never said that it is haram. Mm-hmm. So, because of that, there's no scholar. Yeah. I quoted Yusuf Kardavi, yeah. who said this also, that he feels very uncomfortable, but he said, I would not dare to say it is haram, because the Prophet has never said it is haram. Mm-hmm. So, that is the Fikihis ruling, yeah. that it is actually halal. Mm-hmm. It's actually halal. Mm-hmm. You may argue that it's because the Prophet had not heard about it. But that is a wrong argument because mm. the Prophet have heard about it. Mm. The Arabs have known about it. Mm. There is one hadith, also in the book. The hadith was not about other sex, it was about something else. Mm. But it was this information was captured. Uh, in this that hadith, the Quraysh were challenging the Prophet, uh, heckling the Prophet. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr was the one who was so fed up with, the, with them. He scolded the, the Quraysh and he used a vulgar scolding. Uh, mm. and he said, you can you can lick the criteria of your alat. You know, alat is a female yeah, idea. Mm. Mm. So the concept of licking uh, criteria, oh, the li- yeah. the licking of the criteria is known uh, yeah, to them. Yeah. If this is bad, the prophet would have said it's bad because the prophet yeah. is not not shy because he make it clear that inner sex is haram. Mm. He's not shy to say that. Yes. You know. Uh, if it's haram, it's haram, you will see uh, inner sex is haram. It's clear. Uh, so if this is this thing is uh, not good, he will say so. Yeah. If this thing is good, he will also say so. Yeah. Uh, so. But he it, he left it as something which is neutral. Yeah. Yes. So because of that, the conclusion fikihi wise must be that it is actually halal. Mm. But yeah. it's permissible. Yeah. <laughs> but today some people have taken it and has promoted it until it has become wajib. Mm. You know, it is halal, but it is not wajib. Okay, so to answer your question, that it is permissible for both parties. Mm. No such thing lah. Because this will be part of the tradition that sees sex as only for men and not for women. The, I think that is the thinking behind it. This is Very. about the colonization thing lah. Mm. The way we perceive things or sex. Yes. Actually, the, the question should not be, is oral sex halal or haram? Mm. It should be, if you were to kiss your husband's penis, is this haram, mm. halal or haram? Mm. You look at it, you can find the answer. Right? If you kiss your husband's penis, <laughs> doesn't mean that, does not necessarily mean there will be liquid secreted. And if it's secreted also, doesn't mean you have to swallow it. You can find the answers. And because you know the answers, you will be able to find the boundaries that you can go and you cannot go. But if you keep uh, looking at it from the Western point of view, from the modern point of view, that mm. this is like a brand of sex, oral Couple sex, sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, 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 that people are doing, yeah. then it becomes a problem uh, a bit to answer, you know, because what is it that you do in oral sex? Mm. <clears throat> so that, that, that hadith is one. There is also another writing uh, in the 7th century Imam, uh, his name is called Murtaza, and he mentioned about husband seducing the wife by kissing her all over the body. Mm-hmm. And he described it as in in the neither regions, licking and kissing and, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So when you look you look at that, they don't term it as oral sex. Mm-hmm. But what is happening is like oral sex. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's the same huh? thing. Sure. But when you but when you don't see it as a fed, you know, you don't see it as a branch of sex, but you you, you see it as part and parcel of sensual mm. pleasuring. Right. Then you have already known the limits of uh, halal and haram yeah, as far as Najis is concerned. Then you, you, you keep within that boundary. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no issue about whether it can be done or it cannot be done. Yeah. Mm. The issue is whether you touch Najis or not. Mm. Right. So I want to add uh, two points to what Osman said. One is this idea of all sex. It's permissible, but there must be consent. If your partner is not willing or don't want to do, you cannot pressure them. Right. If there's no consent, because the, the sexual relationship is mutual. 
Mm. There is no oppression allowed. Generally, we cannot oppress people, nor be oppressed. Mm. So that is most important. Yeah. What I, but we think is happening because we have every session we have this question. Is that a lot of us is now like for more fear of missing out, <laughs> and we yeah, see yeah, okay, any a... movie somehow what I think was and yeah, and then it's part of the process is to have uh cunilingus or falasho, I mean all sex. It's like something they do. This is trending in the Western society. Right. For a couple, it's like what you are comfortable with. There are many ways of, of pleasuring oh, yourself no, one or censoring mm. yourself. You don't have to follow these people. Yes, yes. The sensual pleasure is actually the relationship as a couple. Yeah. Mm. And they try to have this to spice up their sex life. But if from some point of view, there are many other ways to spice up your sex life, especially from the prophet's advice or your your words of love, mm. your kissing, your sensual pleasure.